Hey guys! Alright, a few people have asked me to make a, a new person tutorial for this. Um, so I have uh, started this game again in Korea. Um, and I'm going to go over some real basic stuff to start off with. Uh, and then I'll get more detailed as later on. Around civilization choices, um, I would say there's a lot of easier ones to start off with um, than Korea. Um, they all have different focuses if you like to be aggressive, if you like to build a lot of cities or a few cities. Uh, that's commonly called as being tall or wide, wide being a lot of cities, tall being a few very high population cities. Um, there's also, you know, scientific wins and culture victories and diplomatic victories, uh, religious cities, civs, so there's a lot of options. Um, Korea specifically has, um, really it's built around science and great people, and I can go over that in a bit when we get to that point, but basically they're around science. Uh, they don't have an offensive unit, it's a defensive unit. It kills uh, early land units, but doesn't work against cities. It's a replacement for the trebuchet. Um, and then the turtle ship, which replaces the caravel. It's a really strong ship, but it cannot open, it cannot go into the ocean, which sucks. <laughs> um, so again, they're really around their ability instead of the units they get. So. All right, now some of the first things I'm going to go over is for newer players in general, there's these two tabs over here. I would highly suggest you turn on hex grid, um, which lets you see the grid, and then resource icons, which will show you the special resources on the map. Um, these are a very core piece of the game, and you need to see them, and you might not notice them sometimes when that's off. Because um, as you can see, if I click on him, this is what it would look like, and you may not notice a little whale floating around, so turn on resource icons. Um, now, in general, when you start off, you're going to start off with a, a warrior, and you're going to start off with a settler. Uh, the settler will turn on the, gr the icons, so you're going to see the resources for each, um, and it'll turn off when you're not on civilian units. Now, there are a uh, few icons you should probably know. Food, uh, gold, and hammers. Uh, gold is very important in the game, um, now more so in the expansion than ever before. Um, so this is actually a really good start. Um, I only start with um, really a few production tiles, uh, so like one and two and three. Um, but I can make do with that, with this setup, because I'm going to grow like crazy because of all this food. So, um, I always move my settler first. Um, and the reason why is because you may want to move during your first turn instead of settling if you find better options. And I know this because this is a save. If I go up here, you will see marble. Uh, marble is really good. Um, marble lets you build wonders faster. It's one of the best luxuries in the game. Um, and I want it to be within my city's range. Now, every city has a range of three hexes. So one, two, three. I'm not in range of it. Um, but I want to be in range of everything else, so I'm going to move one more time uh, to see there's a rune up here and just to kind of get an idea of what's going on around. Now, something to note as well, um, when you're moving your guy on the beginning, you want to move him into easier terrain so he can move further because you want to show more of the map. So you'll notice like when here, I didn't move to the hill or the forest, and there's also marshes because those make your guy only move one square on the turn instead of two. Um, so I'm moving more squares this way and showing more of the thing. So try to move into like grasslands and rivers and that kind of stuff. Crossing a river ends your turn for movement as well. So you don't want to cross a river unless you can. Um, anyways, yeah, you just want to generally open up the map. So I want to be in range of this, um, but I still need to be on the water because if you're not on the water, you can't build ships. And I want to get to the whales, so oh, my real options are pretty much these two squares. Um, you don't ever want to build on top of a luxury. Um, there are special cases for that, but that's really advanced. So, in general, I'm going to move up, and I'm going to build my city. Um, now the city starts with just the grid around it, and you're going to be asked to do production. So if you click on production, um, I always start off with a scout. Uh, again, it's really important for you to find uh, what's going on around your cities. Um, you need to know where are the other civilizations and the city-states, um, so I always get a scout first. Um, now, if I click on this, actually, it'll bring me into this city. Uh, you're going to see some basic information on the left 
food production, gold, science, faith, tourism, culture. Uh, tourism does not come until much later. Faith doesn't come until you start doing that. Culture is what's going to allow you to unlock more squares. So you're going to see that right now these two squares are up for unlocking next. Um, and they're going to come up in 15 turns. Um, and I'm only actually going to get one of these. So it'll just pick one of them at random um, when they unlock. You obviously want to boost your culture up because then you get more squares and you can work squares. Uh, you can buy squares. So I could hit buy a tile and I could pay all this money. Like I could pay 50 gold to unlock a square. Um, generally you don't want to do that though unless you really need to do it. Um, I actually might need to do it sooner than later because um, I don't have that many good tiles and I'm going to need to unlock these weeds and it might not be close enough. So, um, in generally if you're a new player I would say leave it as default focus um, and the game handles it basically for you. Um, when you get more advanced you can do things like locking and moving your person around. So this has a population of two people so I can move these the one guy around um, and I can have him work different squares and then I can change the focus automatically and all that kind of stuff um, but right now I probably wouldn't deal with that you can always reset it as well to go back to normal so um, that's really about it oh if you want to purchase units over here you can buy them for the gold stuff's expensive but don't worry about that because um, you have no money to start so Next up is technology. Now, there is a long tech tree in this game, um, and the beginning matters a whole lot um, because it's important to unlock key things in the very beginning of the game um, because it'll help you kind of steamroll and get momentum. Um, ooh, I did not mean to do that. Uh, you can, as you just saw, right click on anything and it'll bring up the Civilpedia for this. Um, and if you ever want to reach that normal, it's help up at the top uh, you have everything in here you can search for everything in here so if you need any help you can go up there um, but oh yeah so research so I always start with pottery because I like to have a religion early religions give you bonuses um, and it's also important you get them early because only a certain amount of people are allowed to start religions and whoever gets the pick first gets the best options first because um, nobody can have a duplicate bonuses so I really like to get that first so I always pick pottery first um, now just to speak a general I'm gonna speak about these two rows because uh, it's important you know what goes on here um, pottery unlocks the granary which is really important for me as well because I have three wheats um, and you'll see right now they only give you one more food if you work that uh, specific wheat tile so right, let's go into here and show you this uh, actually I can turn it on manually I got the yield icons um, so you can see all the yield icons so if I work this with a worker it's gonna become plus one so it'll be three food and one hammer um, and that's a whole lot but it gets even better if you have a granary if you have a granary it gives you one more additional food so these would be four food each which is crazy it's gonna allow me to grow really quickly so that's really important that I learned this um, and then the shrine is the first way that you will receive faith um, now next up is animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is also really important. You will not see horses on the map until you unlock animal husbandry. Um, and you can't construct pastures which work with sheep and cows and horses and all that as well. Um, and then there's trade routes. Now trade routes doesn't sound like a big deal right now but it is huge in the game now. Um, you get a lot of early science and you get money through this and as I said money is a big problem in the new expansion you're gonna have problems with money really quickly um, if you don't do this so animal husbandry is gonna be one of the secondary things that we're gonna do really quickly to get um, now archery sounds pretty basic there's a, a, a wonder you can build for it um, it's really nice, but it's kind of not as good as the other ones. Uh, it's usually something picked up a little bit later on when somebody's trying to build more wonders. Um, and this will actually tie in really good with the next point. So you'll see here it says gives you culture of plus one, so that's good, broader brothers, but great engineer points. Now what this means is that you're going to get a point every single turn towards, um, you know, unlocking a great engineer. 
Um, there are all different kinds of great people. There are great engineers, great scientists, great musicians, artists, writers. I mean, the list goes on. Generals. Um, the key ones in the beginning are the great engineer and the great scientist. Uh, great engineer, he's got two options. You can either A, finish any building that you're building in a city instantly. So if you have a wonder that you just unlocked and you want to build that wonder and you want to do it in one turn instead of like 15 turns, you use a great engineer. Um, that's really important because a lot of the racing of this game when you're playing against other people or especially the computer is towards wonders because the first person who gets it gets it and if you were halfway to building it you get jack so it's kind of important. Um, they also can upgrade a tile on the square or on the board and give it four hammers so I could upgrade this as you see my mouse over here in the bottom right there you go actually highlights after a while um, it will would be five hammers on this one it's really important um, and the other one's great scientist and the great scientist is the same thing you can either upgrade a hex to add four science to it or you can learn any tech for free basically um, really important as well because it lets you steamroll. A lot of people try to steamroll towards this uh, writing for that purpose, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, art mining lets you construct a mine and chop down forests. That's important. Some resources are on forests, and you have to remove them before you can use them. Um, and if you cut, chop down forests, it adds production to your city. So if you're trying to speed build something, you can take a worker and you can chop down a forest um, to add production. Um, and mines just generally add mines. Um, they're, the main purpose for these mine early is if you start with a gold or a silver or some sort of luxury that requires a mine, you're going to want to pick mining. Um, but with that, let me just let's just step forward a few turns and see what happens before I get into the more stuff. And I'll just kind of explain what I'm doing throughout this. So. All right, so this turn, I, again, I want to explore out a little bit. So I'm going to, if you walk along the coast, you actually get more vision. All right, so this is really good. Um, so the first thing is this is dyes. This is another type of luxury. Really good. Uh, you'll see the plus four happiness and two gold. So you're going to get happiness for working that. Obviously, same for incense um, and for marble, not for wheat, um, etc. Anyways, uh, so this is a city-state. Now, a city-state... I jump in here. City states are kind of like miniature civilizations. Um, this is Belgrade. Belgrade. I don't know how you say it, but um, they have different personalities. So this guy is a military um, city state, and what that means is, if you're friends with him, he will give you free military units, which is really nice. Um, and they also uh, have a personality. So the personalities range. Um, hostile kind of sucks because it's hard to stay friends with them. Your reputation with them or influence with them will go down quicker. So that's kind of bad. And then it shows the resources he has. If you're friends with them, you get the resource, um, which is really nice. You have to be the ally, though. There's friends and allies, so allies a little bit further along. Um, now, the key thing to know about city-states. Uh, if you pick on city-states... All the city-states are going to hate you. <laughs> um, so you don't want to be offensive so much to city-states unless you really just don't care. Um, city-states are also very important for uh, diplomacy victories. Uh, they add votes to you um, if you're an ally with them. So you get to use their delegates for voting, uh, which is really important, especially in the expansion. Um, so they're useful for that. Uh, they also, as I said, give you free units and... Um, uh, luxuries which is good to have as well um the other thing to note just about them in general if i click on them again you'll see their status for them uh, i can pledge to protect them um which basically means like if somebody goes to war i'm going to jump in there and help them out um which will help my influence this little slider can go to the left or the right um and i can declare war i can ask for a tribute which is means like you basically say like give me money <laughs> or give me your worker um and Basically, you take stuff from them. They don't like it. You'll see there's all kinds of bonuses here. Um, I have advanced tooltips on, so it's giving me a little bit more information than you might see. But in general, you're basically you know, intimidating them to do something. On the reverse, I can give them money or units to improve my performance with them, um, which that's kind of nice. So now the important thing, as I said, about city-state. So the real actual use of city-state, when I first meet a city-state, if you're the first person, you get 30 gold. If you're not, you get half that, so I'd get 15 gold. 
Um, if you meet a religious city-state, you're going to get early faith, uh, which is really nice. Um, and these guys have workers, right? They're going to have a worker that's going to come out here and work on this die eventually. I believe it's around turn 25. Um, and this is the catch. You can steal one worker from one city-state and then not get in trouble from it, like, diplomatically. Um, if you... If you actually have, um, if you do it more than once, they'll all stop trading with you. They'll all be angry to you, and it's not something you want to do. So in general, um, you kind of want to nab one of them. And what you do is always do this or not. You'll make mistakes. Um, is always declare war first. Click declare war. It'll ask you if you really want to. And then take a unit and click on the guy. Um, the problem with it, if you don't, is sometimes, like, if you have an archer, you'll shoot the worker instead of taking the worker, and that's bad. So, um, but then, right after that, you make peace, uh, which is really nice, because city states don't really have, like, a timer. So, it'll be a nice set, um, to do that. Uh, you just also saw you can right-click on any announcements on the right to get rid of them. I like to clear them all out to make sure I know them all. Um, alright, so we're just kind of walking around. I got my worker coming out in five turns. I'm going to jump on the hill. Obviously, higher ground lets you see more. New luxury from copper and a new city state. Um, this will be good, so I'll get another 30 gold for meeting these guys, assuming nobody else has. Yep, so I got 30 gold. He's merchantile, uh, which means he gives you extra happiness if you're a friend with him. And again, he's hostile, which that's not fun. And as I said, merchantiles, they have two resources instead of one. So this guy's got por pearls and porcelain. Porcelain is actually one that you will never get as a player. Um, only city-states get it. So that's a really good reason to be friends with merchantile folks. Um, now, if I end my turn in there, I'll just show you what it does. Um, so there's a sheep. If I end my turn in here, he's going to be unhappy. Right, so like it's he's I'm trespassing, so I will slowly get him more and more angry if I stay in here because he thinks I'm waiting to kill his people, um, and I probably am, but I'm not going to do it this time. Um, now I kind of want to wrap back around. I don't like having a lot of emptiness in between my guy uh, because there could be important stuff close by. So I'm going to hop over the river. Hey, look at that Arun. Um All right, so again. A little bit more of my guys, so um, yeah, let's get this. You always want to pick up runes. Um, so this added one population to my city. My city is now a population of two, um, which is actually important to note because um, in my specific case right now, you always want to have your guys working on the two food ones to start off with, but I don't have any more. Um, they're all on the edge, so I am actually going to buy a tile. Um, I'm actually going to buy this tile, um, and I'll put my worker there. Because see now it says that it's going to take six turns to get a guy. If I hadn't done that, and let's put him back where they were, this is what it was like. Um, I would be stagnating. I wouldn't be growing at all. That's really bad in the beginning of the game. Like, you want to grow as fast as possible. Work every single food tile as much as possible. Um, so I bit the bullet and bought a square, even though normally I don't. Now this is a barbarian hut. You're going to meet these guys a lot. They're a pain in the rear in the new expansion. Um, and really it's more of an annoyance. Like It means that I have to keep a guy around my workers to avoid them. If you kill the camps, uh, you get gold. You, you fight them. You get experience. I mean, there's a lot of good reasons to kill them. It's not as easy, though, because you'll see if I move a mouse over it. Right now, he's got better modifiers. I'd actually lose a little bit. See, it's a minor defeat. Um, the, my guy's on the left, his guy's on the right. The red is what I would lose in general fighting him on average. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Um, so yeah, that's actually kind of a problem. So um, I'm not going to fight him right now. He's probably going to start throwing his guys at the city-state, and then the city-state will give you a quest um, saying like, help, and then you can kill the camp and you can actually get influence for helping him out. Um, so I'm going to leave him alone for right now. Uh... Let's start this way. Okay, and now I got my scout. Scouts are uh, same movement, two movement, but they can move over difficult terrain and they won't get stopped. So I could go like forest hills in one turn, whereas this guy would get stopped. Um, they also have a bigger sight range, not as strong, um, but in general that's what they're meant for. 
Now, uh, what I do for this, it's kind of a very specific build. A lot of people build the monument next, but I'm going to start on a worker, but I'm not going to finish the worker. Um, the production that I put towards the worker will be saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it for three more turns, and then I'm going to switch to the shrine, build the shrine, and then I'm going to go back to the worker. Um, the reason why is, again, I want the early religion, so I need to get that as soon as possible. Um, so this guy I'm going to follow along the coast, because I want more vision, and that's exactly why. Uh, so... Go up one, just so I can make sure there's nothing I miss in there, and I'll go back down. So I'm obviously going to grab this next turn. Um, still pretty set. Uh, see, look at somebody already got a pantheon. Um, so somebody's already started a religion. Um, that means that they've run into a city state uh, that was faith, and then they got enough. They get like eight faith to start um, to start their first pantheon. So that's why, like, if you don't start doing this early, you won't get one. Um, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people don't even care about religion because it's kind of hard to fight the computers with it because they spam missionaries. Um, but in general, it's not that bad. So, uh, so let's get this. Ooh, 80 gold. Um, all right. So, I keep looking around, and I ran to Ethiopia. All right. So, declaring war, not going to happen right now. Demanding, not going to go well. Discussing, you can talk about, you can denounce them. That's really bad. Uh, declarations of friendship are really important. Um, and I'll go over that with trading. So, trading is the most important point for um, what you're going to be trading between them. So, right now, he's got some gold per turn of two that he could trade, and I have some here. You can't actually trade flat amount of gold until you have a declaration of friendship which well, that's pretty important that's a new feature in the last expansion um so you got to be friends with people to get stuff out of them uh in general you're going to swap luxuries so if you have like three uh whales and this guy has two crabs you're going to swap a crab for a whale you always want to keep one uh of your original ones because it's happiness um but you want to get diversity because it gives you more happiness um so any extras you want to trade away as best as you can um, Alright, so let's keep going. It's a jungle square. Nothing all too special. Bananas is like one of the worst squares ever. <laughs> um, I finished pottery, so it's asking me to pick a new one. Um, now, in general, in general, I would pick calendar next. Um, actually, no, I would pick animal husbandry, I believe, next. I can't remember. I either do Animal Husbandry or Calendar. And the reason why I pick Calendar is Plantations. Plantations let you work a lot of resources. They let you work incense. They let you work um, the dyes. They let you work uh, wine, uh, you know, silks, all kinds of stuff. Um, and you need Plantations to do that. Um, actually, mine doesn't... It shows you right here, Incense on the bottom right. You'll see... Oh, there it does the highlights too. Uh, it says Requires Calendar to Use. So, like, that would be why you get this. Um, the second one I always pick is usually around um, getting one of the resources to start working. Because I'm going to have a worker coming out here um, after a while, but I need to get something going. Um, I'm actually going to pick Animal Husbandry, though, because I want to see where horses are. I have a lot of plains, a lot of open squares with nothing on them, and I am betting that there is some horses around here. So I want to see where they're at, because um, it makes it more important for later. Um, again, following the coast, get to the hill, have a little bit more vision. A lot of incense down here. Um, hmm. So I'm probably... Oh, I found a natural wonder. Um, so natural wonders are like Mount Fuji, um, and they give you special stuff. Uh, so it's happiness when you just find them. Um, so now I have an extra happiness. I was at four, now I'm at five. Um, and if you look at it in the bottom right, you'll see two gold, three culture, three faith. So that's crazy. So if you can get this within a city's range, really big deal. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes because the AI will fight over it a lot. Um, and we have a barbarian camp right next to it. But they're really good to have um, your squares in. Bananas sucks. Don't don't get me started on bananas sucking. <laughs> um, so again, I just want to kind of... Find out what's going on down here. Uh, see, now difficult terrain. This guy can only move one. That's why workers... Or those guys suck. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. 
Um, so that's where Ethiopia started. So there's some silk. Uh, I'm gonna move over. I totally forgot. So I said I was gonna switch. I needed to start on the shrine. Um, again, I'm at a point where, see, look at, I have two on two foods, one on a hammers, and I'm not growing. That's bad. So I'm gonna buy a square because I'm not gonna get this square in time. Um, Actually, sorry. I'm not going to get this square in time, um, and it's also not very much food. So I'm actually going to have to buy another wheat, which sucks. But now I'm growing again really quick. 17 more turns. Okay. Um, and I have seven turns on my shrine, and keep on going. So my guy needs to move. All right, water on the other side. So this is a continents map, so there's generally some large... Uh, entities with water in between. Um, wow, this would be a really nice area. Okay, so just to explain, um, if I could build right here, uh, it would be amazing. And I might actually try to do this sooner than later because it's within three to uh, different resources. Uh, more incenses, which I have two up here, but um, it's actually good for the religion that I might pick. And then spices, which is a new one. And then I'd get the Mount Fuji. So it's probably going to be a race of some sorts because Ethiopia is over here. If they found it, they're going to start beelining for it. Um, that's in general where I'd go. All right, big area. So let's get out of the jungle. I'm going to start heading up with this guy. Okay, so that just spawned. There was a little sparkle, so that means next to him is a village. So I want to avoid that for the moment. Get out so I can move around. There we go. Cows are good. Lots of food. Thou shalt not All right, so now horses are on the map. There's one, but let's see. Yeah, okay, there was another horse. And another horse. And... That just made this like one of the best scores ever. So I would get horses, two incenses, Mount Fuji, and two sets of cows and a spices. And I'd be next to a mountain, which is important later on for building observatories. Um, yeah, that's about one of the best scores ever. So, uh, so finished animal husbandry. Now I really need to do the calendar because I want to start working the incense once this guy finishes. Um, all right, so let's go. Looking around, again, there we go, in cotton, not bad, it's another resource, requires calendar. Um, okay, this kid's getting in my way. So, generally I don't like to try to fight with the uh, AIs on the, because they kind of, not cheat, but they'll usually jump in front of a rune before me. Um, okay, so... Just looks like this is the edge. Um, one more turn. See, look at I automatically spread to the incense. All right, we ran into Greece. So he's at three gold at the moment. Um, reason that's important is I'm actually going to sell one of these guys my early resources. Oh wow, here he is. Um, there's Athens. So that's his starting city. So, wow, this is going to be a big fight. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to do a little bit more. Oh, I should actually start heading back. Shouldn't have done that. Once I start that guy, uh, one of my two needs to go back. Uh, I'd like to send the warrior back. Um, but it looks like I'm just going to have to go like this. Shortest would be six turns. Six, seven, six turns to build. That's perfect. Um, oh, I just found a new one by walking by it. Okay. So the reason why I always send my one guy back at that point is because I need to defend him because the barbarians are going to be roaming around like this guy is going to start throwing out barbarians. Um, my guess is there could be one up here. Oh, and <laughs> I totally forgot to get this for an earlier. Um, wow. Uh, that's dumb of me. Okay, so I ran into somebody else. He's at three gold per turn. 
stadhouder over de Nederlanden. This is the Netherlands guy. Dutch. Down here. Oh, he's up to the right. So he's probably over here somewhere. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go... I'm gonna scan to the left and then start wandering back. I generally want to have both my guys around here um, sooner than later because I'm gonna have to start doing some stuff like escorting my settlers and... Um, you know, sending out workers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm also getting to the point where I can steal a worker. Okay, he's gonna go to the left. Okay. Because I want to start stealing a worker. Um, that means I need to get near a city-state to do that. So, we're just gonna have you beeline back. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a big deal to guard your guy, but trust me, you start a game and you lose a worker or settler, you are screwed. So, <laughs> uh, it's better safe than sorry. Um, alright, so let me turn off advanced view. So you have four ways to start with in the beginning for your social policies. Uh, these are you getting through culture, um, and they generally are going to help define your civilization. Um, tradition is for tall societies so societies that have small amount of cities but they have a large population uh, liberty is for the opposite lots of cities um, if you want to get early workers early settlers and a lot of settlers liberty is the way to go um, honor is if you want to be a war like nation um, it's not generally good to start with honor unless like you are one of the warring civs like the um, I don't know let's pick Zulu um, and the Moroccans I think no Zulu is probably the more impy ones. Um, him has... You probably can do honor and get away with it. It's really fighting early on. Um, the bonus is that whenever you kill a barbarian, you get culture. So if I was to sit here and like send guys outside those camps, like this guy, and just farm them, like when a guy pops out, kill it. Guy pops out, kill it. Uh, you can move through social policies fairly quickly. And then piety. You want to go religion uh, first. Um, I have not heard of a good opening yet with piety as the starter, um, just because these help you with your religion, but it's not necessary to get you started with. So in general, um, you want to pick one of these two. I like tradition. I really like tradition a lot. Um, it fits my play style better. So I'm going to go with this one first. So you unlock it, and then from now on, I can start working down these four when I get further ones. Uh, the first thing I did, though, is give me a lot more culture. So I have four culture turn, which means I'm going to get more policies quicker and more spaces quicker. So let's just keep going to next turn. All so right, learned my calendar. Moment. Perfect timing. Look at the same turn. The worker's done. All right, so I need to work this incense. Um, so I'm going to take my guy, and I'm just going to kind of guard it. Um, and then what I like to do next is actually a settler, but I am not at four food yet. Four food is really important. Um, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start on a scout for three turns, right? Yeah, that's the best I can do. For three turns, and then I will switch over um, and start a settler. So um, next up... Uh, I did my two. Next one is what you want to pick is your next luxury. Um, my next luxury would normally be whales. Um, so I would go for sailing. Um, and it also gives you another trade route, which is very important. Um, but... Hmm. Kind of stuck. Because I could just start rushing for the marble. Um, let's look. No, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do. Let's do mining, and the purpose for this is because one, it'll get me to masonry. Let's look at this. It'll get me to masonry, which will give me the quarry. Um, but I'll come out in a bit. Um, so it'll give me masonry uh, to start. Uh, doing this later on, but it'll allow me to chop trees, which will start this process faster because I need to get this stuff going because I want to get my guy over there. So, alright, start the working and 
Ooh. Make sure I'm on the right guy. I'm gonna go jump up and grab that real quick. Yep, keep going. Um, not sure why I did that, but... Hey, look at that. It's actually not the same every game. Um, last time I had done it when I was just testing the video, it was actually explore the map. So, I got a free upgrade. Alright, so I upgraded, and I'm at 4. So now that I'm at 4, I'm going to switch, and I'm going to reset my tiles, which doesn't change actually anything. Um, but the major thing is that now I'm at, as I'm stagnant, but I'm working everything as best I can to get uh, people out. So with that in mind, that means this guy... I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on this area, and he's going to go steal me a worker. Okay. I want to make sure oh, nobody takes this. Just an axe man at the moment. All right, so oh, I need to give him a order. That's what it was. Okay, doing pretty good. Still. Um. Okay, so the spearman. I need to start walking down. We're going to go kick this camp. And nobody's working yet this spot, so... This guy should be sending a guy out soon. Or he already has, he's working one of those two. Yeah, see, look at this gutsy little guy. They even come out of the camps now. Um, Alright, so he's going to run out. And I'm just going to get some more health. Um, okay, so I worked this. Now I have more happiness um, since I'm working this square, but I'm actually going to sell it. So the first thing I want to do, um, I'm probably closest to Morocco, so I want to see if I can sell it to him first. Perfect. Five is the great amount. Um, you can do it for four, but five is better. So now I'm going to get five per turn. He's going to be happy that I did a trade for him. Um, but I'm going to start getting more income. Because again, look at I'm already at zero. Uh, I got five for that trade, so that's important. Um, all right, now that I've finished masonry, um, but, but allowed me to chop as well, I am actually going to now do sailing. All right, now I could work this to get more stuff, but I need to get this settler out. So I'm going to chop one of these trees. Um, I'm going to chop the one on the river. Yeah, that's three away. Further away is it's less uh, stuff. So I'm either going to chop this one or this one. Eh. I'll chop that one. Let's see the closer one. All right. Ha, <laughs> he walked back. He's getting smart. Okay, so I'm going to move in. Oh my gosh, where are all the workers? Okay, I'm going to say do nothing at the moment. I'm going to chop down the tree. It's going to give me my 13 production for my city. That's going to help speed this up from 10 turns. Another policy to unlock. Um, I always get the middle one first. Because it's going to unlock Landed Elite, which is probably the more important one. Um, so this will give me a free monument. Now, if you remember, in the beginning I said a lot of people to build the monument first. I didn't have to even build it. So now I have more culture, um, and I didn't waste turns doing it. Alright, so all right, now that I'm here, I kind of want to do a pincher. So if I get behind him, and I get in front of him... You will notice that I get flanking bonus of 10% for fighting him. Um, so I'm going to take the first hit with my main guy. Um, it's going to do the most damage because he has a lot more strength. So I'm going to knock him down. Uh, so you'll see that he went down a lot. But now the guy is low. So I really want to kick his teeth in. So I'll hit him from behind. I don't do it the other way because this guy, the scout, is weaker. So he's going to lose more health originally than this guy will. So... Um, 
units do less or less damage when they're more hurt. So take the big hit with the big guy. Little guy jumps in afterwards. Okay. Um, I'm still kind of waiting on this. Why don't they have a guy coming out yet? There he is. Look at that. Oh, and perfect timing. So this is the reason why I did this. Um, he spawned a new unit because um, Barbarian Camp spawn units. Um, but if I had not jumped in with my scout, I would have not had enough to take this in this turn. Um, so I'm going to jump in. And who, does this guy have anything for it? No, he doesn't. Um, so I'm going to jump in, take the camp, get the 25 gold. Um, this made somebody happy. Belgrade. Wow. Apparently this guy was super happy, even though he's really far away. So he jumped all the way up to a friend um, and almost an ally. So he's going to start spawning units for me. Um, I can tell him to stop if I don't want him to, but they're actually really good units. So I'm going to let him do that. And I have a friend, which is kind of nice. Um, and then my scout, on the other hand, I'm just going to kind of start running out of there. Um, now this is where I said you need to make sure you do this. Declare war. I'm going to declare war. Under protection of nobody, no traitors to him. Hit yes. Or now at war. I'm gonna jump in. Ninja take their worker. Click on him again. Make peace. And there you have it. So I got me a free worker. It's very important early on in the game um, that you get these workers. Uh, they mean quite a lot. Of, I mean, you saw it was like 12 turns to make one. So getting a free one is important. Now I cannot do that again. If I do that again, um, I will have every city-state hate me in the game. So that's the only time you can do it. Um, all right, so now I need to pick a promotion for my guy. He's got a little bit of experience. Um, you can heal him. You generally don't want to pick that unless you really need to. Um, then you have rough terrain and open terrain. Rough is hills, forest, jungle. The other ones, not hills, forest, jungle. <laughs> Anything else. Um, there's a whole lot of jungle and forest, so I'm going to go rough. And I'm not going to fight. I'm just going to sit here and gain health. Because I'm in the forest, which gives me a defensive bonus. And this guy is not. Um, so if he wants to attack me, he's going to take more pain. Um, and my other guy, I'm going to run back up to my city to start healing. Um, this guy, I'm going to run back to town. Done chopping for now. So let's jump into... I'll do a uh, wheat while I do the other one. Okay. All right, well, I think that's good to get started with this first video. Um, I'll throw this one up there, and then I'll continue on if you guys like this. Um, just let me know, feedback, any questions you got, and enjoy.